I heard Dave was on an isolation take earlier today. What, what, what's that all about? What's, what's, the, what's the driver there? I think we'll kind of yeah. hit a softer subject here. And it's a float yeah. tank. Yeah. It's um, a deprivation tank, isolation yes. tank, whatever you want to call it. When I was in high school, I was part of a study at the University of Toledo that was dealing with that for sport performance. And I was powerlifting at the time, and it kind of bridged the time when I was still in school to the summer after I graduated from school. And it was close to, it's going so far back, 30 weeks or something like that. It was a lot. And um, the, it, was, it was on that, but it was really more on sport performance and visualization. So it was using the sensory deprivation tank to be able to visualize better than how that would impact sport performance. So there was visualization work, you know, meditation, visualization, however you want to define that. That was done outside of the tank, but the tank was used to try to help with it. And it did greatly because I went from whenever somebody starts visualizing, you know, and I'll use powerlifting as an example because that's what it was. You know, I would try to visualize the bench or the squat and I couldn't see it. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just a dark mess and my mind's all over the fucking place. And then, you know, I got to a point where I could begin to see it, but then the barbell would float and spin and, you know, it wasn't doing anything that I wanted it to do. And um, the tank helped that tremendously. It took, it took time. It took a couple months, but it got to the point where everything was vivid and colors started to come through, which is usually pretty rare when mm -hmm. it's dealing with visualization. And, um, and they had cueing as well, you know, that was going through. So the they're letting you know kind of what steps to take and kind of helping me get into the hole, you know, in, you okay. know, into that state to be able to get there and to relax and so forth. And over the period of time, you know, it's, I don't want to say it was the total reason but the the meat that I did 10 months later was probably to this day one of the best meats I ever had in my life and I went nine for nine I didn't miss a single lift every third attempt was 40 to 50 pounds more than what I thought I was able to do I took a like a five pound uh, record personal record on my second attempt and just kind of left the thirds for fuck it yeah. Let's see how it goes and let the guy who was my training partner at the time call those and ended up doing things. I'm like, holy fuck, you know, and it's, I kind of equate it to Caddyshack when the guy's out on the golf course and he's just having okay. a game of his life without getting struck by lightning at the end. You know, I still <laughs> survived. But so that's something you've done through the years consistently. No, you take a break no, or, okay. I, I did it. And it, I got to a point where. Um, I still visualize training sessions before I did them. I've always kind of done that. Um, I stopped doing that probably around 90, 90. Actually, I stopped doing it when I came to train at Westside because I didn't know what the fuck we were going to do. That was the methodology that was there. So I, if I visualized the max effort exercise, we didn't know what the fuck we were going to do when we got in there. Mm -hmm. So it, it's like, what the hell am I going to I, I, yeah, I couldn't do it because I didn't know what to do. Um, so with that, I started to just, I noticed at that time that if I just focused and visualized the main lift before I did it, or if it was the dynamic effort work, just five seconds before I did the set, I, it came right like that. Okay. You know, it's, I could close my eyes, see it, and it's there. So I didn't need to visualize the whole training session beforehand. I found that I can do this in five seconds. Yeah. If I'm just, stop, I need to be stopped, you know, stop. So there's no movement. I need to be stopped, stable and safe, you know, yep. not thinking that I'm going to get hit in the head with a plate or something <laughs> like this is going to drop on my foot. It doesn't take long. Okay. It just takes a few seconds and then visualize the lift and then go do it that I continued to do all the way until today. If it's a challenge set or, I mean, most training is just training, okay. but if it's a challenge set or if it's something that I need to be at a different state, it's pretty easy for me to do. Did it take you a lot of time to be able to build up to the point where it only took five seconds or was that? I didn't even know I could do it. I didn't even know I could do it because okay. I never did. 
because okay. everything I did was always pre-meet mm -hmm. or pre-training. And then during the meet, I, I was always, I guess, afraid okay. to visualize it because what if it fucked up? You know, if I fucked it up in my head, yeah. I'd fuck it up on the platform. So I already knew it was, I've already did it thousands of times or hundreds of times in my mind. That was the day to actually execute and do it. So I didn't really see the point of rehearsing again if I already did it hundreds of times successfully. It was basically game time. You know, it was time to execute. Where it came back in is a friend of mine told me about two centers in town which are float, what the hell are they called? The float spa? Mm -hmm. And... I thought, well, what the hell, you know, it's, can, can it help for joints is what I went out there for. I went out there for, to, for two things. I, I went out there to see if I could lower my heart rate. Okay. You know, it's kind of, you know, like Hannibal Lecter, you know, yeah. made himself almost <laughs> like that. Yeah. How cool would that be? To yeah. do, you know, so if I, if I could go out there and, and visualize and get my, you know, mentally get my heart rate you know, to lower, you know, regulate and so forth, that could have value. The, the other part of it is the joint because you're in a, you're floating. So there's no non-weight bearing. Yeah. Non-weight bearing. Yeah. I mean, gravity still is kind of mm -hmm. on you, but you're floating. So how would that make my joints feel? Because they're fucked. And then if I was in that environment and I did, PNF stretching or some type of active stretching with my shoulder, could I get it to a greater range of motion than I could get otherwise? And I have. So for the past few months, I've been going, I try to get in there once a week. If I go for a second session, I'll actually listen to a audio book. Okay. So it, it, I can absorb it better mm -hmm. and more of a relaxation type of thing maybe, or? You can learn better. Okay. Because there's no, you're, it's fuck, I don't use the lights, Closed off. you know, yeah. I don't use the music. There's, there's nothing, you know, there's no cell phones, there's no kids, there's no, there's nothing, you know? So it, you kind of go batshit crazy if you don't know what's going on and it's your first time in there where I think a lot of these spas, clubs or whatever it is, will give the first flow for free okay. because it's, it does freak some people out because yeah. they're so used to noise, mm -hmm. you know, in their life and there's nothing. Well, I'm going to give it a shot. You've convinced <laughs> me. You've convinced me. Uh, hopefully the, the uh, audience here uh, is as well.